On today's Fit to Eat, I'll be preparing grilled shrimp with sweet potato fries and seared spinach with onions. Registered dietitian Rebecca Turner has a tasty way to make and store homemade soup, and my guest is a producer and host for several shows on MPB Radio, Sharita Brent. It's going to be a great show, so stay tuned. Welcome to Fit to Eat, I'm your host Rob Stinson. Today my guest, Sharita Brent, hosts and produces several shows on MPB Radio, including Now You Talking with Marshall Ramsey and Everyday Tech. Sharita, welcome to the show. Hi Rob, thanks for having me. Absolutely. I, I, I've been, I'm used to being in your world, Yes. and now you get to be in mine, Yes. but I understand there is this persona that I've got to touch on, hmm. and I hear it's Rita B. Rita B. I live double lives. Yeah. So. We'll talk about that again. Talk, yeah, no, no, yeah, you can mention a little bit about it. Listen, <laughs> before we start, though, what we're going to do today is a really great grilled shrimp, mm -hmm. kind of a warm spinach side with some incredible bacon, okay, mm. and I'm going to show how to make that healthy, and then sweet potatoes. Mm, my favorite. I yeah, this is going to be really good. But listen, let's do this. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about Rita B, and then if you don't mind, I'm going to put you to work a little bit. Uh, are you, are you going to pay me? Huh? Are you going to pay me? Absolutely. You know how? You know how? <laughs> how? You get to eat a plate when we're done. Okay, that's fair. So that's you, get, fair. you get paid by food. That's fair. All right, <laughs> awesome. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. We're going to make up a salt-free blackened seasoning, and I under, I've done this on several shows, and I hear you've actually made this, huh? Yes, and I was shocked to know, learn that it was still good without the salt. You know, that's a mental thing. I know, <laughs> I know, isn't it though? And I tell you what, that's such an important part of all this is that, you know, people have got to find a way to reduce their salt mm -hmm. intake. They really yeah. do, you yeah. know, it's so I used important. To be, I used to put a, a, a bit of salt on my plate and dip my meat into it when I was younger. You, you know what kills me <laughs> in, in like my restaurant? I will watch food go to a table and before they even Try it. They like put all this. I was like, yep. why do you do that? That, you hurts, know, it, that hurts your feelings, doesn't it? It does. I swear <laughs> it does. All right, so here's some black pepper. Okay. Some onion powder, which has no salt. Okay, so okay. granulated garlic or granulated onion, no way. Okay. Granulated, gar I'm sorry, <laughs> powdered garlic, <laughs> white pepper. Paprika gives it kind of that neat little blackening color. And then I put some rice flour in this one, just because on the shrimp, I want to try and get them to keep a little flavor, and the rice flour mm -hmm. is good, and it's gluten-free. Oh, it's gluten-free. Okay. So, all right, I'm going to give this to you, and if you'll stir that up, okay. I'm going to move some of this other stuff around. But talk to me about Rita B. Let's, let's hear about Rita B. Well, I am a radio host, so I do MPB, I host several shows, and in the midst of that, I'm also a comedian at night. So by day, I do radio. Bada bing. Clean, you know, no cursing on the radio. And then when I do my comedy, uh, I just kind of let it all quite, hang out. It's not quite the same, huh? Now I do clean and, and dirty comedy, if you will. I wouldn't say dirty, but I do church gigs. So I get to go in the churches. And sometimes I'm doing clubs after hours where I can be a little more free with my language. I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds incredible, really. Yeah. yeah. It really does. I'm going to take and put about a tablespoon of oil on here. Mm -hmm. I'm cooking two skewers because, like I said, I got to pay you okay. with food. That's right. So we do have and a little bit extra. This is the only extra. time that I will accept food for pay. <laughs> it's the only time. Yeah, that's right. You're not going into a club and saying, gee, you're going to feed me. All right. That. All right, now this pan is really hot. The shrimp won't take long to cook. And what we're going to do is put them in there. Let them get around that, and then I'm going to take the seasoning, which you mix very well. Thank, Thank you. you very Thank much. You. Put that back over here, and I'm just going to lightly dust these so with that you, seasoning. So what do you do to keep the, the oil from popping on you? That's the thing you know, that I hate most about You know, about sometimes, I know, it's hard. You just honestly have got to stand away. Let's turn these, watch. And, wow, look at that. and we're going to season that side, which has got some oil on it already. Mm -hmm. 
I want to get it a little bit on both, and then we're going to turn the heat down. But I mean, the, the key is, you know, I grew up up north, mm -hmm. and the flavor of what they had was so minimal because they don't believe in using seasoning, you know? Oh, wow. Now, down here in the south, obviously, we're, we're not the same, <laughs> are we? Right. We'll season Frosted Flakes. I used to put sugar on Frosted Flakes, too. Yeah, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, it's a middle thing. Well, I tell you, the neat part about shrimp, too, is we have the best in the world right here in Mississippi. We mm -hmm. really, really do. Look at those. Look at those. I mean, is that incredible? Yeah. I mean, those are just beautiful. And, and you know the term now, kind of the catchphrase for Mississippi, is wild-caught American shrimp. Yeah. You know, so uh -huh. when people go into a store, I hate it when I see all the Asian products, mm -hmm. and I'm not trying to put down anybody, yeah, but be careful. we need to be <laughs> buying our local product. Now listen, we've got tons of ingredients you guys are going to see today. You'll never remember them all. So go to mpbonline.org slash fit to eat or join the MPB Facebook page even better. Um, and, you know, stay in touch that way. So, well, talk, do, you, do you think it's expensive to eat healthy? I hear people say that all the time. You know, honestly, the way I look at it, if you buy it and, and you keep it to where you're making stuff up for the week, you know, fresh vegetables and mm -hmm. all, do you have to go spend the money on organic? No. Right. You don't. Mm -hmm. So you go buy fresh produce, make a bulk of veggies, because my big thing is trying to get people away from big portion sizes of protein. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And let them eat more vegetables, and it's so much healthier that way. Yeah. It really is. I think I need to eat bigger portions. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't think that uh, <laughs> losing weight would be your issue, huh? Yeah, I, I'm trying to gain weight. Folks think that, that is crazy, but uh, I weigh 106 pounds, so I'm trying to gain weight. Understood. Yeah. And you know what? It shows that there can be other issues that people have. Let's go ahead and take these now turn them in. Look how beautiful that is. Ooh. Now that is really the way you want them to look. Those yes. are true blackened shrimp. That looks great. And, and to me, right, I'm going to basically at this point, I turn the heat off because you don't want to overcook them. Mm -hmm. You know, and that, that's a big deal. And what I may do, you know, we're looking at those and think about it is take and we're going to actually kind of put a little bit, and I know it sounds crazy, Okay. of apple juice over them right when they go on the plate. Apple just to juice. make them, yeah, it just makes them glisten real pretty. Okay, you it know? doesn't really affect the flavor. I usually no, put really lemon doesn't. juice on mushrooms. It so. could be wine, you know, it could, what, what do you oh, use? Lemon juice. Yeah, that'll yeah. work. Mm -hmm. And actually, on the plate you're gonna see, I put a big piece of lemon so you can squeeze it on there Great. to get that kind of tartness and all. So anyhow, so talk a little bit more about, all right, I mean, you've got like, I hear you are one of the I, I wish I could say the way I want to. Go ahead but and say I, it. No, I can't. I can't, <laughs> say, that I'm public I can't say that I'm public broadcasting. <laughs> I hear you a phenomenal drummer. Yeah, I've been playing drums since I was very young. Got started in church, eight, nine years old. I was playing in the church with my mom, who's a pianist and singer. So nine years old, I'm on the drums. The regular drummer didn't come. She said, Rita, you get on and try it. And I never got off. So went to play drums in school, Murrah High School. And then at 18, I joined the Army Band. So I played drums in the Army Band for nine years. Boy, and there's some serious discipline in that, huh? Yes, yes. So you get the fundamentals kind of there that you never did get before, huh? Right. Basic training was very interesting. But believe it or not, the food at basic training was amazing. I gained 20 pounds at basic training. No kidding. When I went in, I was 108. When I came out, I was you got to be the first person I've ever heard compliment food in the military. I'm telling you, know? you, we ate three times a day. It was free food. Basic training wasn't so bad. The gas chamber was crazy. Crazy, but the food was excellent. I, I grew up in a military family, and I grew up playing trumpet. Did you? Yeah, I started taking lessons when I was six years old, and I would be out in the middle of the woods when we go camping in the summer with my family, mm -hmm. playing. All right, now this this dates me. <laughs> Herb Albert and the Tijuana Brass. Oh wow! And wow. I love trumpet. Mm -hmm. I moved to New Orleans so that I could really play jazz. Yeah. Yeah. So. I love music. I'm kind of, yeah, I mean, me we too. have a lot, well, actually we have some, some stuff in common with that, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think it just shows most of the roots of great music are here in the South. Yeah, absolutely. Who's your favorite jazz artist? <sighs> Grover Washington. Oh, that's a good one. That's I love saxophone. Mm -hmm. I love saxophone. I, uh, 
You know, I moved to New Orleans to meet Al Hurt, who is not really a jazz performer, but I had the opportunity to play with Wynton Marcellus. Did you? Yeah, nice. and, and let me tell you, phenomenal talent, phenomenal talent. You know, I, there's I so <laughs> many great people, though, but Mississippi is really the heart of the blues and a lot of our jazz music, so I think, you know, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. I see neat, you didn't get the New Orleans accent while you were there. I made a point not to. <laughs> yeah, I want I, uh, it, I want it so badly. Now my, my parent, you know, <laughs> I actually was born up north and my parents would have killed me. You know? Oh, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, so I, I made a point to really focus on trying to stay yeah. to my roots. Well, I go to New Orleans, I always just try to do the accent and try to trick people. All right, well, listen, <laughs> we're going to go take a short break, and our registered dietitian, Rebecca Turner, has a tasty way to make and store homemade soup. We'll be right back. Living in the South, it is practically required to use a mason jar for every conceivable use. Pantry organization, decoration, drinking sweet tea, and making salads. But now, they were for soups. Traditionally, if you wanted soup, you had to make a large batch at home or resort to canned varieties. Batch cooking at home takes time and you may not always want the large leftovers. Canned soups are cost effective and offer an easy portable lunch, but they lack fresh ingredients and pack an insane amount of sodium. Now you can get home cooked soups with fresh ingredients with the convenience of canned. So let me show you how to build one. So start with a wide mouth mason jar and add your flavor base at the bottom of the jar. This should be a stout, flavorful base because there is no broth. So next you want to add fresh vegetables. Today I've chosen mushrooms as well as snow peas. Now if you chose a sturdier vegetable, you're going to make, want to make sure that you cut them up. That way they'll cook quicker. Then you're going to place your noodles on top. Use a quick cooking rice noodle or your favorite noodle already cooked. Put a handful in there. Next, you're going to top it with a green leafy vegetable. Kale makes a great topping because it's sturdy enough to keep your protein from touching the rest of your vegetables, which we'll add next. So today, I've actually chosen chicken. You want to make sure you put in already cooked protein. And you certainly don't have to. You can leave off the protein for a vegetarian soup. You can top with a little bit of fresh herbs or spices. And then you're just gonna easily cover and refrigerate until you're ready to eat. Now, when you're ready to eat, you're gonna take the top off, pour in boiling water, give it a quick stir, and then recover. You'll leave it for about three minutes, or maybe a little longer if the noodle instructions suggest so, and then stir again before you serve. Now, if you don't have any boiling water available, no problem, just remove the lid, add water, and microwave, but keep the lid off. Now you have a healthy, on-the-go soup that is fit to eat. All right, welcome back. All right, so now we're going to go to our sweet potatoes since, you know, mm. they're so prevalent here in Mississippi. Yes. But, you know, I've got to ask you, as we get started on this, who's your favorite comedian since you do stand-up? Oh, boy. Okay, I'm going to give you two. Okay. One on the lady side and one on the fella side. Okay, that's good. Um, uh, if I had to... Dwindle it down because this is really hard. I would say Chris Rock is probably my oh. favorite male comedian. Okay. Um, I've been watching Chris Rock since I was young, even before I began doing comedy. Got an opportunity to see him live recently. Yeah. Just blew me away. His stage presence is outstanding. On the other side, I would say Wanda Sykes is a oh, uh, yeah. huge fan of Wanda Sykes. I okay. always People always say I look like her because of the natural hair thing, and I guess because <laughs> I'm black, I look like Wanda Sykes. So I love Wanda Sykes, the stuff that she talks about, and uh, she's my favorite, and Chris Rock, and Ricky Smiley, too, which I'm on, on tour with him. With Ricky Smiley. Are you so. really? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to put you to work real quick. All right. Onion powder and garlic powder are in there. Okay. Some cinnamon, because this is going for the sweet potatoes. Chopped parsley mm -hmm. and just a little bit of pepper. Really? And so let me ask, when you get ingredients in the grocery store, can you get the off-brand? Is it okay? Yeah. Are you okay, kidding me? I was just me? asking. Because the more expensive it is, the more I think it's better quality or something. I don't know. Eh, you know what? I'm going to tell you, there's, there's a lot of hype in what you do. All right, so what we're going to do next is put a little oil in a hot pan. Mm -hmm. And I put quite a few extra sweet potatoes. Like I said, I'm paying you a food. Did these come from Bardman? Yeah, these are actually local. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> I, uh, I'm really big in all of my restaurants. I'm trying to buy local. 
I really am, you know, or at least, you know, when I say local, statewide. Yeah. All right, now we're going to toss these, and I'll tell you why. Because when we add that seasoning on, mm -hmm. that little bit of oil that's on them, and it, obviously you're not eating all the oil, will allow the seasoning to stick. So, once again, fantastic job. Thank you. Thank you, professional mixer. All right, and we're going to sprinkle it all over them, and then I'm going to flip them a little bit and sprinkle the rest. Mm -hmm. So that way everything has flavor, you know? How long did it take you to get this flipping thing down? Oh, yeah, I almost lost one. <laughs> they, yeah, they're trying to jump out, huh? You, you know what? I've been cooking. I've been cooking as long as I've been playing trumpet. Nice. I've been cooking since I was like six years old, yeah. I used to make up menus when I was a little kid, and my favorite dish was burned peanut butter toast or hot dogs oh. a la Normandy. <laughs> and I thought I was so fancy schmancy with that. But, uh, Talk a little bit more, you know, about your career, Nick. Where do you want to go? What's your, what, what are your thoughts? Like, well, I'm hoping to get on late night at some point, doing some comedy on Jimmy Kimmel or Jimmy Fallon. Uh, that's a, a huge goal of comedians to get on mainstream television. So I'm already working on my five-minute set, my, my TV ready set, just in case the opportunity comes. I want to be ready. Yeah, you know yeah. what? You, you gotta be. And you never know. You don't. You, you don't. really don't. Yeah, I mean, just last summer, that's when I got hooked up with Ricky Smiley. I had one time to perform for him, and that was the time that, that got me the gig, so. Isn't that cool, man? Yeah. That's really neat. And, and where did you guys go? Where did you guys... Uh... We've been all over. We've gone to Pittsburgh, Baltimore. We do a lot of stuff in the South. Texas, uh, Jacksonville, Florida, we've been to this year. Atlanta. So he's really, really popular in the Southern region. So we do a lot of uh, shows in the, in the south Southeastern Damn. part of the state. Yeah. Yeah. But his radio show is so big, he's known all over. But it's just been awesome for me performing for him. He actually goes up before me and does about 45 minutes. And then I come up and have to follow him. So, it's well, crazy. It, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's hard. But in a great way, that gets everybody warmed up, too, you it know? It does. And I appreciate that. So I, I'm not the first one just thrown out there to the wolves. Yeah. He warms yeah. them up. He gets them excited, and then I come out and do my thing. And I'm telling you, it's a stressful 10 to 12 minutes. It is, it is stressful, especially if the laughs aren't coming like I want them to. Oh gosh, that's <laughs> got to be, that's got to be, you know, the hardest part, I guess, about it, huh? Yeah, yeah. Is when you have a crowd and they're just sitting there looking, and, and you don't feel like you're getting where you want to go. Right, because that imagine people naked does not work. It doesn't work at all. Well, you know, you were talking about playing drums, and I think it's so interesting because. A drummer can take over. Mm -hmm. I used to manage bands in New Orleans. Nice. And yeah, I was very in the music scene. And it was always difficult when you had a group out there and you didn't see them kind of, you know, like getting into the right. music, you know. Right. And a drummer can really do that. Yeah, absolutely. We have the twirling sticks, we have the power to take over. But sometimes it's not the performer, it's the crowd. You know, it may, you don't know what they've been through or what's going on out there. So it, it, as a comedian, I, I try not to, and I learned this from Dave Chappelle, I don't tie my self-esteem to my job. So if I don't have a good gig, I don't go home and say, and, I and, suck at and life. Go, and go in depression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you just know, get up and try again. It, it's kind of like this, you know? It's like when I cook, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, I'll come up with dishes and I'll make it, and I'll do these fancy wine dinners, mm -hmm. and I'll have everybody in trance, but you'll have that one or two, you know, those individuals, yeah. and I'm like, God, what could I have done better, you know? And you right. walk away from it more thinking. More cinnamon, more cinnamon. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's really kind of funny. And I'll Ooh, get, now you, see how the, now, you see how they're looking? Yeah. That's exactly what you want. I want to Those eat are now. like healthy oh, fried sweet potato, you know? Because, I mean, fried sweet potatoes fried. are everywhere yeah. now, right? Mm -hmm. The key is to try and keep them healthy. Because sweet potatoes are just great for you. you so know? no marshmallows. I, I usually load mine with marshmallows <laughs> and butter and cinnamon and nutmeg. And That's like Christmas, you know? <laughs> yes. No marshmallows. No, we're, we're really, we verged down a different path here on Fit to Eat. Mm -hmm. But I think it gives people an opportunity to see that they can still eat the sweet potatoes. Yeah. But they could do it healthy. Yeah. All right. So listen, we're going to go take a short break. When we come back, we're going to finish this up with some incredible seared spaghetti spinach and onions, and you get to eat it. Yes, I'm excited. Okay. All right, <laughs> we'll be right back. What if I told you there were fruits out there that can help keep your heart healthy, your body strong, fight diseases, 
boosts memory and brain health, and that fight bad cells in your body. You'd think those fruits were pretty super, right? Well, that's why we call these berries super fruits. Blueberries help boost your memory and your brain, strawberries protect your heart, and blackberries help fight diseases and they keep your muscles strong. Yep, I'd say they're pretty super. And I have an easy way for you to get all those super fruits into your diet along with some protein-rich yogurt. It's a tasty berry parfait. It's really easy to make. First, you start with your favorite flavor of yogurt and an empty glass. You're gonna put a nice spoonful or two at the bottom to start your base. And then you're just gonna keep continuing with your favorite type of berry. Today I have blackberries, raspberries, blueberries, and strawberries. My first layer is gonna be a few blackberries. Adding different berries to your parfait really adds some different flavor. Next, you're gonna add another scoop of yogurt. If you choose Greek style yogurt, it has twice the amount of muscle building protein than regular yogurt. I think I'm gonna do raspberries next. Add a pop of color and a different texture. You don't wanna to put too much because you wanna make sure you leave room for another layer of yogurt. You just keep building until you either run out of room or you run out of yogurt. Now for the last, I'm saving my favorite, blueberries. So I'm just gonna to top my parfait with a good helping of blueberries. You know, I have these growing in my backyard. I absolutely love them. And for a little bit of sweetness, we're gonna to top it with some granola. It gives it a bit of a crunch. Now these parfaits are perfect for our breakfast. They're an excellent snack and they make a super tasty dessert. All right, welcome back. All right, you ready? Yes. I'm we ready. are gonna put together this incredible spinach dish. And you know, the one thing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and do this one on my own. I'm not even gonna make you work. Oh, you don't trust me. That's no, no, means. I was worried about the oil and the onions. <laughs> and you, you talked about popping, yeah. and, and that's a possibility, and I don't wanna ruin your beautiful clothes. <laughs> okay, so let's talk while I'm doing this. So we got onions and mushrooms, and you see it is popping. Oh, I love mushrooms. Yeah, kind of mushrooms this is good. And we're making enough for you and the staff. What kind of mushrooms are those? Those are just regular domestic mushrooms. Nothing, nice. nothing fancy, nothing frilly. Okay. We're gonna throw in some crushed red pepper, not too much. Those things are really spicy. Yeah, <laughs> they are. Black pepper, mm -hmm. gotta have some flavor in there. But you again notice, no salt. No salt. Now the only salt we'll have is what is in natural bacon. We mm -hmm. have taken the liberty, as you can see, of cooking, and I, I had to make some extra because I know our staff here. That looks delicious. And yeah, they're gonna they're gonna want it. But you know the one thing uh, I, obviously we, we need to talk about while I'm doing this is kind of the basis of where you started with the radio and everything and doing Marshall's show, which I've done, which I think is absolutely incredible. Yeah. But talk about it and kind of name them so everybody knows because honestly, I don't even know if I could keep up with everything you do. <laughs> well, I host and produce four shows on Mississippi Public Broadcasting, Think Radio. So Monday mornings, I kick off the week with Marshall Ramsey. His show is called Now You're Talking. And, and that's we, 9 a.m., is that correct? Yeah, 10 a.m. 10, 10 a.m., yes. okay. Uh, so we interview folks who are musicians, artists, folks who survived cancer, just folks who have good stories. Marshall's a great interviewer, so we do that, kind of co-host and talk about movies and stuff like that. So that's Mondays. Tuesdays is my legal the, show. I'm going to throw the spinach in here okay. just so while you're doing that. Looks good. Tuesdays yeah. is my legal show. In legal terms, we talk about all kinds of stuff. Uh, politics, drone law, marijuana law, you name it. Wednesday is Everyday Tech, which is one of my favorites and which is one of the people's favorites. When it, whenever I'm out, everybody is talking about Everyday Tech. They come up to me asking for tech advice. You know, hey, really? yeah, my, my phone is doing this. Like, you just need to call in to the show Wednesday morning at 10. And Friday is Next Stop Mississippi, co-hosted with Mary Margaret Miller of Visit Mississippi. And we just talk about all the stuff that's going on throughout the state, different events where you can, we talked about the sweet potato capital of the world. Vardaman. And different festivals and stuff like that. So a you know, lot going on in PB Think Radio. You know, a lot of people don't realize, you know, Mississippi has got great resources. We really mm, do. Yes. Okay, so now we've thrown in, the only thing I added while you were talking was a little white wine, which will cook out. But look how beautiful. I keep everything nice and crisp. Mm. I don't overcook the spinach. Mm -hmm. Rule of thumb, rule of thumb, is that keeping the vibrant colors of your greens 
is going to keep the nutrients. Mm, okay. Just so you know. Okay. All right, now I took the liberty while we were off of taking a shrimp over here. If you'll grab that plate for me, okay. we are gonna actually put some of these beautiful greens Ooh. right on your plate. And I tell so you I what, eat with a, on a plastic plate at home. Does that make the food better or worse? <laughs> I, you like know a what? Styrofoam plate? I don't think there's a real guide <laughs> to it, but uh, at the same time, we're going to go ahead and finish this dish and actually kind of plate it. But you know, I tell you what, I don't know how you do everything you do. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, I'm thankful that I still have the energy and the desire to do all this stuff. Well, well I can't you know, eat. the the greatest part about you on radio and especially like Marshall is you kind of keep people in touch with mm -hmm. what's going on. Right. And and we oftentimes in this area, in my opinion, forget. Yeah. You know, we forget how many great things there are here in Mississippi yeah, and and we resource. underrate ourselves, so mm -hmm. to speak. So, do I have are to wait ready? on you or can I eat? No, go ahead. Okay. No, no, come on. Excellent. Is there a specific order or do I no, just go gosh, for it? No, gosh, no. Got to have a shrimp, though. Mm-hmm. I know. Mm. Is it Delicious. good? Mm -hmm. All right. Do not forget, gang. I know you're not going to remember all this. You got to go to mpbonline.org slash fit to eat or join our MPB Facebook page, and you can get all of these recipes. And uh, I tell you what, she's going to be kind of living proof, I guess, <laughs> as to what the thought is on the food. And, and how are we doing so far? So far, so good. I want to put this fork down and eat with my hands like I do at home, but I, since we're on TV, I won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I have got to thank Sharita, Rita B. Brent. Thank you so much. For being on the show. Thank you for having I'm me. I'm your host, Rob Stinson. Eat well.